feeling lucky today? You should be. Imagine if the universe had been just a tiny bit different. You might not even be here. But here you are, thanks to the perfect balance of dark energy. Some say it's luck, others think it's something more. Maybe there are other universes where things turned out differently. Let's explore the wild world of multiverses and see what it's all about. So why are scientists so intrigued by multiverses? Picture this. If there's more than one universe, there are endless possibilities. In another universe, maybe gravity works in reverse or stars are a different color. It's like a cosmic playground where anything is possible. Who wouldn't want to explore that? Now, think of each universe like a bubble floating in the cosmic ocean. Sometimes these bubbles collide, creating new realities or even wiping out old ones. It's a wild journey through space and time, and we're just getting started. But hold on, there's more. Some scientists think multiverses could explain why our universe seems so perfect for life. It's like someone dialed in the settings just right. But instead of a cosmic creator, it could be the result of endless universes with different configurations. It's mind-blowing, and we're only scratching the surface. So does your existence prove that multiverses exist? Maybe. Or maybe it's just a lucky twist of fate. Either way, the idea of multiverses opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. Let's keep exploring, keep asking questions, and who knows? Together, we might uncover the secrets of the multiverse. Ready to dive in? Dark energy is all around us, and it's quite potent. It's the force that's driving the universe to expand at an accelerating rate. But what's intriguing is that the amount of dark energy we have seems to be perfectly balanced. If it was significantly stronger or weaker, the consequences would be drastic. Too much, and the universe would rip apart. Too little, and it would collapse. So, why is the amount of dark energy just right? That's a puzzle that scientists are still working hard to unravel. Imagine dark energy being not just a little off, but billions upon billions of times stronger than it is. That's way beyond a minor miscalculation. It's so off the mark that some call it the biggest blunder in physics history. However, when it comes to explaining other bizarre phenomena in our universe, like the double-slit experiment or the Bell inequality test, quantum physics hits the bullseye. Now, how do we make sense of this glaring gap? Well, some folks lean towards the idea of intelligent design, the notion that someone or something deliberately set dark energy's value to create the perfect conditions for life. But that's a tough sell for scientists. After all, proving the existence of a godlike entity is no easy feat, and science isn't about taking things on faith. So for many, another solution was needed. That's where multiverses step onto the stage. Let's rewind to 1987, a time when we hadn't yet figured out the exact amount of dark energy in the universe. But we knew one thing for sure. It had to be super tiny, or maybe even zero. Why? because we're here, right? Physicist Steven Weinberg had an interesting take on this. He said, hey, maybe the universe's dark energy is just right for us to exist. It's like winning the cosmic lottery. If things were even a tiny bit different, we wouldn't be around to talk about it. Weinberg believed that if the universe hadn't hit the jackpot in creating conditions for life, well, there wouldn't be anyone around to notice. But Weinberg wasn't done there. He got more specific. He thought that for life to kick off, you'd need galaxies first. Makes sense, right? Stars and galaxies are like the building blocks of life, providing the raw materials and energy we need. So if galaxies were already forming early in the universe's history, chances are life could have started popping up too. Back in Weinberg's day, astronomers spotted a really old quasar, a billion years after the Big Bang, hinting that galaxies were already in the works. Weinberg did some math and figured out that this early galaxy formation required dark energy to be super low around 10 to the power of minus 7 joules per cubic meter. So if galaxies were the stepping stones for life, 
The dark energy had to be just right, not too high or too low. Feinberg thought if dark energy was way tinier than this, there must be some other explanation besides just being lucky. But guess what? Turns out, the real dark energy isn't too far off from what Weinberg calculated. It's like the universe was fine-tuned for life all along, and we're just starting to connect the dots. Life and dark energy, who knew they'd be such good pals? Here's the thing. Just because we see universes where we exist doesn't mean it was a sure thing. We could have easily been non-existent. Think about it. The chances of dark energy being exactly where it is are incredibly slim. Could it all just be luck? Probably not. Imagine this. You have to pick three random numbers between minus one and one, add them up, and hope the total is super close to zero. Sounds crazy hard, right? Now what if you could try over and over again? Given enough tries, eventually you'd hit the jackpot. It's like playing the lottery. You might need a gazillion tries, but eventually you'll get it. The same idea goes for explaining why dark energy is so oddly low. Picture this. Instead of just one universe, there's a whole bunch, each with its own random dark energy level. Only a teeny tiny fraction of them would have just the right dark energy for life to thrive. And guess where we'd end up? In one of those lucky universes. No luck needed, just a whole lot of universes out there. On its own, the idea of a multiverse would still be too vague to be a good scientific theory. For starters, what kind of multiverse are we talking about? How do they exist in the first place? Fortunately, there are actually a few different concepts of multiverse that physicists can describe. Firstly, we have a multiverse separated by time. If you are familiar with the idea of the Big Bang and the Big Crunch, you will know that it's often believed that this creation and destruction of the universe is an eternally repeating process, with new universes arising each time. If the underlying numbers of each universe are a bit different with each iteration, for instance, if dark energy density can change from universe to universe, then with enough Big Bangs and Big Crunches, you would inevitably end up with a universe with a dark energy density exactly like our own. Of course, there are some big ifs here. We're not certain yet if the universe will crunch back into a big crunch. But if it does, and if each time it does, things are a little different, then we could be looking at a multiverse. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey today. Our exploration is far from over, so if you're as fascinated by the cosmos as we are, don't stop here. Hit that subscribe button.